Ryan, you know, I just can't decide which seeds to plant this year. You know, Judy, I know where you need to start. It's right here with a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. It's almost seed starting time and next week we'll have some great tips on how you can start your seeds. Coming up on the show today, we'll have Jan's tips of the month. We'll also be showing you some early spring color. But coming up first, some small fruits for the garden. I'm out here at Portland Nursery Stark. I'm with Ken. Ken, you know, a lot of us are you know, some new to gardening. Mm -hmm and we really love picking fruits in the, in the summertime. And there's a lot that we can do in our plant in our own yard that we can pick. Absolutely, yeah, this is a great climate for growing everything from trees to, to the smallest strawberry plant. Yeah, you know, you drive through the valley and you see these big fields, but I think some people don't realize that they can actually grow small amounts in their, in their own landscapes. We've, yeah, there's some great uh, bush fruits that are high yielders, you know, maybe 10, 20 pounds on a mature plant that uh, just take a couple of feet. You know, so there's you know a wide selection. So what what are some good ones that would be good for the for the home gardener to plant in your yard? Sure, um, you know, if space is really limited. Anybody can grow a strawberry plant. Um, you know, just a small pot, a couple of uh, good day neutral types like Albion, um, keep keep you in a fruit for the for the cereal bowl in the mornings. Um, probably next, I'd steer people toward blueberries. There's some good half highs that are highly productive. Um, Something like Sunshine Blue, which is a southern high bush type, uh, uh, really strong producer without pollination, and uh, extraordinarily long season. I've been getting fruit into uh, the very end of September, and sometimes even into the first few days of October the last few years, which is uh, you know a good six weeks past the very last of the northern high bush types. Right. You know, and in the blueberries I've seen can actually be somewhat of an attractive, attractive plant. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a small number which are actually uh, evergreens, so they can sort of hold their own uh, uh, as landscape plants during the winter time. But the uh, other varieties do have uh, beautiful canes. Uh, you know, some of them have nice strong yellows, uh, some good strong reds, so they uh, aren't quite going to uh, face down a red twig dogwood, but they're, they're getting there. You know, you know, I do love blueberries, but I also really enjoy raspberries. Mm -hmm. You know, are, are some of the berries like that, you know, can we do those in our backyards? Definitely, yeah. Um, raspberries establish really quickly. They can, you know, you almost need a chain and a whip sometimes. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, a little bit of height, they're, they're somewhat self-supporting, so you don't need any kind of an elaborate trellis. You know, sometimes just a few stakes, maybe a couple of strings to keep things from knotting over. And uh, there too, you know, once again, if you're a patio or a balcony person, um, you can use things like uh, the raspberry shortcake, which uh, does really well in containers. You know, so if we're, we're looking to pick out some different fruits, and you guys have a great selection out here at mm -hmm. your stores, you know, this time of year, you know, what, what are some things that we need to look at depending on what we're, you know, looking for what kind of fruit to plant? Sure. Um, this is the season when things are just starting to wake up. So you can take a few clues, you know, what's, what uh, looks like a bigger start, uh, better shape for something like a blueberry bush, good bush balance. Um, and then, you know, um, looking across the variety, if you see, you know, that some are waking up uh, faster and some are a little bit behind, uh, sometimes that can be a clue that maybe the, those, those smaller ones are struggling a little bit more. So choose the, the bigger, healthier ones. And it's probably important that we know the space where we, we have where we want to plant. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like a strawberry plant, it's going to be kind of a low ground right. cover where you have a more shrub like a blueberry versus more of a you know, vining like a raspberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, soil type too, you know, uh, uh, certain things you're not gonna wanna put into areas that have been uh, vegetable gardens, you know, like uh, uh, rambles and strawberries, both uh, share a lot of diseases with tomatoes and peppers, for instance. So uh, uh, obviously blueberries are acid lovers, so they'd be good companions for, you know, maybe some of your azaleas or rhodes as long as you're using organic fertilizer. And you guys have a ton of information on your on your website because it can be be overwhelming. It it can and uh, and and even that information there's right. a lot of it there. But uh, um, I, I'd say our website's a, a great resource. Right. You know, so if you're looking to plant some small fruits in in your yard, make sure you come out to Portland Nursery out here on the Stark Street 
Recorded Division Street and talk to their staff and get some great ideas about what you can grow in your garden to harvest this summer. So Ken, thanks for having us out. Thanks for seeing At Blooming Junction, fall isn't about winding down, it's about getting ready. In the garden, start the next season off right, right now. Fall plantings produce healthier, more robust, and drought tolerant plants than those planted in spring or summer. In the kitchen, get ready for the holidays with fresh, organically grown produce from our fields. So whether it's for the garden or for the kitchen this season, Blooming Junction is your place for quality, uncommon plants and produce for your home and garden. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Well, it's March and I'm out in the garden with Jan and Jan, the weather is beautiful it right sure now. It sure is. Really makes me want to get in the garden. Me so too. what do we need to be doing this time of year? Well, it, there's a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> what I, what we did the other day was start with, this is at a, a gold dust Akuba. Um, and I like it because against the darker house, it gives some light where shade is. But we actually, you won't be able to tell, but we took about a foot off the top of this last week and we pruned it right down to where a growth bud will be to bring it back up. See, here's this one right here. So we trimmed that top off and now it's gonna sprout and keep uh, the rounded shape and keep it low enough that I can see outside. So there's actually three plants here, but uh, they sort of look like two now. Yeah, so th that's a good good time to get out yep. and do some pruning. Yep. And then we'll, we'll walk down here, you have a Nandina, you were right. talking about doing um, some pruning too. These Nandinas have been here a really long time. And every Nandina I see never gets this big and looks this luscious. And I've always wondered if we have like a a water line leak. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's, it's big. It's huge, and, and we prune it down all the time. Yeah. And I, I didn't last year, and I really loved the plant, but I want to be able to, I'm going to get a new deck this spring, and I want to be able to uh, see. So when you're, when you're going to go prune that one, are you taking out entire stalks on that one? You can, you, you can thin it, top? or just bring it down to whatever level you want. Um, and it'll pop back and next year it'll look like this again. Right, right back It will it. for sure. And then the other day we decided to prune the um, Budlia. And the Budlia is a, uh, gr grows and blooms on new wood. So the more new wood you encourage, the more bloom you're gonna have. And we did, we took another three or four feet off the top of this. So we'll see. So maybe the blooms will be low enough that we'll be able to see the hummingbirds. Right. And I notice it's, you know, this is leaping all the way out down. Along absolutely. This, along the so you could have even gone farther. Oh, absolutely. We could take it down to a foot if you wanted to. Right. And we've done all the rose pruning uh, so far this year. We've taken not this one in particular, but we've ta taken most of the other ones way lower than that. Um, and because these that are on this side, they actually come up and get pretty big and look nice yeah. there so we let it go a little longer. So it's definitely a good time to kind of survey our yard after we're coming out kind of winter and 
what it's been doing and there's getting ready for There's a lot to survey, yeah. <laughs> especially with winter wind damage and stuff. There's lots of cleanup to do yeah. for sure. And then in the back, I got a surprise the other day I want to show you. Let's go back there and take right. a look at that. So Jan, you do have a little bit of a surprise when you came out here in Absolutely. the garden. Absolutely. Well, it wasn't a surprise. First, I had the, the Arborvita hedge about eight feet taken off a couple weeks ago, and it looks really good, so I'm glad I did that. But I came out here, and that's a Royal Land cherry. It's been there at least 70 years. Um, and one part broke out last year, now this part goes out. And I can't, I mean, it's not a productive cherry tree anymore, right. hasn't been in a long time. So I can't say that I'm not excited that I'm going to have more sun right here. Right, because you're, you're going to get a lot yep. more sun in Absolutely, your where the vegetable garden goes. And the other thing, one other point is that if you're going to put a new tree in your landscape somewhere, think about where it's going to shade and is it going to shade your neighbor's vegetable garden. Right. So it's, it's a consideration to make depending on which way it's going to shade, but I'm excited. <laughs> what I'm it, excited about is that they get to take it out of there because right? it's the neighbor's tree. And you tree. get the sun and, you, and your yep. garden gets the benefits. I'm so. good. I'm so good. Jan, it's always great tips and always great to be out here. It looks like you do have some cleaning and some work to yeah, do in the garden. And, a little bit. You know, the weather like this should make us all inspired to get out and be in our garden. So right. thanks for having us, Jan. See ya. Easter is coming up in just a few weeks, and we have a great project for you to do with your friends and family. It's growing Easter grass for your Easter baskets. Why use this plastic Easter grass when you could have the real thing? So the first step is to get some black gold all-purpose soil. Now this soil is great because it's all sterilized, there's no insects, there's no disease in it. Don't use any kind of soil from your garden. And it actually has some fertilizer in it. And we're using this plastic um, produce container too. We're gonna recycle that. So I put some of the soil in and I'm just going to add just a little bit more and it's pre-moistened so it's really nice and ready to go. And then we went to the store. We just went to a regular grocery store and in bulk and got wheat berries which is really the seeds of wheat and this is really a great grass. It's a pretty grass, looks just like a lawn. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just sprinkle it on top of this soil and you want to really cover all that soil. You don't want to see any of the soil underneath the seeds because you want it in nice and thick. And then these wheat berry seeds is to soak them overnight. And we're using the wheat seeds because they germinate much faster than just regular lawn seeds. And we are um, ready to go. I am going to put just a little bit more soil on top to kind of um, cover that seed so that stays nice and moist. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of misting to make sure that it's all nice and moist. And then I'm gonna cover this. You leave this covered until you see the green starting to poke up. So then you can take, once your tray is all planted up, you can take it and set it in like a nice warm window inside your house. So after about 10 days, they'll germinate up and start sprouting. So these are about 10 days old, which is you know, pretty quick. Um, so after you do the same, you know, they've sprouted up, you can open up the top of the lid, continue to let them grow, and then whenever they get to the height that you want, you could go through, you know, you can just trim, trim off the tops like this, and you can use these to eat or grind them up or let your cats eat it, but that's the nice thing about using the wheat seed is you can actually, you know, have them use for it later. So you can keep on those, or if you want to look nice and tall, you can take your Easter basket, you know, you can pull this whole thing out of the bottom, you can see how quickly they've rooted. And so you could just set this whole little piece into your little basket. And if you need to, if it's not quite the same size, you could take your little scissors or a knife, just kind of chop this into pieces like this. Put that aside. And that'll fit right down into your little Easter basket. And this will continue to grow while it's in here, so you can keep it misted. And then you just decorate it up, put your little Easter basket here. You can fill these up with little jelly beans or little candies or little treats. And here you have, you know, kind of a finished little Easter basket. And it's continued to live. So once you're done, you know, you can just mist it, continue to grow it on as long as you want to. You know, once you cut it and harvest it, it will continue to grow back. So this year, don't use this plastic grass. Grow your own. It's a great Easter basket tradition. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. 
At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From house plants and hedges, to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. For over 100 years, Collier ArborCare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. Well, it's early spring and there's one vegetable that you can plant right now and that's onions. So if you go to your independent garden center, you're going to find bare root like these walla wallas or you're going to find them in tray packs in soil. Well, either way that you buy them, you do have to separate them. You're not going to plant them just in one clump. Yeah, so when you take your clump like this, you know, you can pull, pull them apart. And when you're digging your little trench, you know, we'll dig a little, little trench right in our soil and we'll want to space these out. So spacing will depend on how big of an onion you want it to grow. Definitely. So if you're planting these closer together, you can go this close like this, but just know that when this plant grows, it's going to grow into the other one. So if, like these, we've spaced out a little bit farther. So as the onion grows, you'll get a full-size onion. Each one will have room. You can go a little bit closer if you wanted to, depending on if you want to harvest earlier and have a smaller onion. Or if it's already spaced out, you can start plucking every other one out, harvesting it, and let the remaining ones get larger. But all you have to do is just lay the, lay the roots down here, kind of move your soil in around, pack it around, and then continue down your row. And then you can plant as many rows apart as you, as you want to, just leaving a little bit of space between the rows. Right. It is pretty easy. And you know, you can just pluck these out like a spring onion. You can use them small for salads or wait till later in the summer when the tops start turning brown and shriveling. That, that's when you know they're ready to harvest. You know, planting onions, it's a great time to get them. Get into your independent garden center this weekend and plant some at your garden. We have a fun springtime project for the whole family. It's dyeing daffodils. And this is a pretty simple project you can do. All you need is a little, a little vase or a little jar. We use some warm water. And then we take our favorite uh, food coloring. So we can either use um, like a little gel like this or the little drops that you get. We find that either green or blue are kind of the best colors to show up on there. So we're gonna take this. We're gonna put a few little drops of, this is the little gel in there, into the water there. And then we want to make sure that with our daffodils, we give everything we have has a little fresh cut on it. So we'll put a little fresh end on there. We're not going to worry about the sap or the little juice that comes out. And then we can just stick this in here. We'll kind of stir up our gel here a little bit. And depending on how deep the color is will be how much we want, want it to soak up. So the darker the color, the more kind of coloring you'll get up in there. So after it's all kind of stirred, we can just put our fresh cut daffodils in there. 
and then they will start sucking up the coloring up there. And it usually takes a couple days before you start seeing it. And what's really cool is you can use the flowers that are open or you can use them that they're buds because they will keep on opening as you put them into the dye. And this is kind of like a science project. So it's to show that plants, how they take up water in the soil, but you're doing it in the water. So the plants are taking up that water with the dye all the way up into the flower. And you can see that it's all the way at the end of the petals. So it's, it's also a good lesson that when you have fresh flowers in a vase, that you want to have nice fresh water because the flowers are cut, but they're still taking up water and keeping them as fresh for you to enjoy. You know, this is just a little project, but everyone can enjoy it. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. You work hard in the garden. Shouldn't your gloves do the same? Garden Like a Girl makes gloves and apparel from natural, recycled, and organic materials. Garden Like a Girl gloves will help you tackle any job. They are designed to fit, protect your hands and nails, and they last. Plus, 10% of our profits go to cancer research. To learn more about Garden Like a Girl products, go to our website, gardenlikeagirl.com. Garden Like a Girl, ruggedly feminine. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Well, after a long winter, it's early spring. We are so excited for color in our gardens. I'm with Diane. We're down at Wafer Farms. And Diane, the place is bursting with color. And you've got you. so many great things out, out right now that, you know, what do we have that we can get in our gardens this time of year? Well, there's lots of different options. Most people, when they think of spring, think of your standard color bowl. Your daffodils, a couple primroses, maybe a pansy viola, and of course, probably a dusty miller. But there's so many other options, whether you want to do some perennials or some annuals. As you can see, the table is stacked. Oh, yeah, it's done. You know, coming down here, you look at some of these things, like, you know, these are areas that are just, you know, just getting ready to start bursting. And those are going to bloom for quite some time. I mean, we're talking probably into about June. Right. I mean, so if you can get some early color now and get it to last that long, that's bonus bucks. Oh, ab absolutely. And, you know, and then some other fun ones here, like this little guy here. You know, this is this one's a little uh, saxifrage. A saxifrage. And that lime color is such a new color. So many people are doing those moonlight gardens. It's nice to get a little bit of white early in the season. And then you have in here... This little, Virginias are always kind of a nice one because they keep that nice evergreen foliage. They do. But this, is a, this is a new variety. That have. is a brand new one. That's Shoe Shine Rose. And it's going to stay a little more compact. So it's going to be more towards the front of the border or a container. Gotcha. And then the primroses. You know, you talked about your standard primroses, but there are so many new varieties. These, you know, these doubles and these really dark colors like these guys here are just And that's stunning. the Valentine color. And we also have the Baltic Blue. Yeah, and the color on that, I've never seen you know, a blue color like that. But you're saying these stay really tight rosette, rosettes, right? They do. And the blue is very nice because you get that nice veining. As it opens, you're going to get those darker blue veins throughout that little primrose. Right. And those are going to bloom clear into June. So it's going to bloom for quite some time. Oh, nice. Uh-huh. 
And then you know your standard, you know your bleeding hearts. You know you can't have a garden without a oh, no, without bleeding not. hearts. And you carry a lot of different varieties. We do. There too, you we know? do. So this is your standard, but they also come in. We also have the white, we have the gold, and we have the Valentine as well. Oh, very pretty. And then moving on down here, you have some other, you know, some of the anemones and some of those other cool. We sure things. do. So the ranunculuses are just getting started. It's one of our favorite. They last for so long, and they just get these great, almost peony-like flowers on them. They hold up really well and makes a nice center for a pot for quite some time. The English daisies are just coming into bloom, and so those will give you some nice red colors. We also have the anemones, so we have the larger anemone, and then we also have the smaller Grecian anemone, so a little bit of both. Right, and then you know, so from other different like colors and textures, like, like your euphorbias. Well, and the euphorbias are fantastic because they are evergreen, so they are gonna keep their leaves in the wintertime. They will go full sun. They will take half day of shade and they're just starting to bloom. So this is what we call the blooms. It's going to be more of a chartreuse color and this is going to get it as well. So it's gonna have quite that contrasting color on there. You know, and then, you know, we're behind the sea of, of hellebores. You know, we got some people talking about the hellebores, you know, some varieties that are you know, drooping down, but some of them now are, you know, the flowers are upright so you can actually see what the, what the colors are. Well, and they're just fantastic for any garden. They are so easy, they're evergreen, they bloom for a long period of time. And the nice thing about them is they start out some of these really rich colors and then they will turn to almost a green like dried color. And that's gonna hold on for most of the summer. So it's still gonna give you something there um, even when other things are blooming. Right, so so many options for things that we can do in our pots and our containers. You know, a lot of these are perennial items so they'll come back year after year. Yes. So you can replace them or you know, when you're done with them in your container, you know, put them out in your yard and replant your container with something different. So, Diane, you know, you guys are bringing in, you're open every day? We are open right? every day, 10 to 4 for our, I guess you'd call early winter hours. So we're here daily. And I'm assuming there's new shipments of color coming in all the time. There so. is, with this ice storm, we didn't get all of our product in, so we do have some brand new primroses coming next week. So if you're looking for some early spring color and lots of inspiration for your garden and your planters this time of year, come down and see Diane down at Wavra Farms. So Diane, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And if you're excited about spring, you gotta get excited about Garden Palooza. It's happening April 9th at Bauman's Farm. And for more information on today's show or any of our other episodes or Garden Palooza, go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.